This is Kids Barbecue Championship. Each episode, four different kid grillers yes. test their skills in two themed barbecue challenges. That's unbelievable. My palate is like... Boom, 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 boom. With a chance to take home the crown and $10,000. Oh, my God. Money, money, money. Tonight, we're talking about none other than Tex Mix. The kids head to the border. Oh, man, this is awesome. And the competition heats up. You want flavor? I got flavor. I'm the Ellis Griller in the game. Who will be the next? <laughs> what is that? Kids Barbecue Champion. Y'all want to fight. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Kids Barbecue Championship. You are four of the top kid barbecuers in the entire country. But only one of you is going to walk away with the title of Kids Barbecue Champion and $10,000. Yeah. $10,000. 1-0-0-0-0. That is like what? To take that top spot, you'll have to grill your way through two intense rounds. After the first round, one of you will be leaving the competition. I hope you all are ready for a flavor fiesta because today we're taking a trip to my home state to celebrate one of my ultimate favorite styles of cooking. We're talking about none other than Tex-Mex. Yeah. For your first challenge, you will each get 30 minutes to create your version of one of Texas's most iconic dishes. It's nachos. Ooh. Yes. Love nachos. We want to see how you elevate this classic dish with your own unique barbecue style. So you must include a grilled protein with your signature rubber barbecue sauce and at least three additional grilled toppings to your nachos. This is nacho time to hold back. <laughs> we got 30 minutes on the clock. Are you all ready? Yes! And your time starts now! Nachos, 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 get your nachos here. Yeah, I like sausage on my nachos. Pulled pork is my favorite on my nachos, but we don't really have time for that. My favorite thing on nachos, don't get mad, I like to put coleslaw on my nachos. It's been a lovely show, y'all. <laughs> Anybody have any lime? Here you go. Oh, thank you so much. My food is bold, just like me. It's delicious, of course, because I'm delicious. I am making chipotle flank steak nachos with a cheese sauce and a fresh guacamole. My three grilled ingredients will be my jalapenos, my tomatoes, and my avocados. I have a secret rub. Sight. My special rub that my mom taught me passed down from generation. My grandma taught my mom this secret rub. You're not supposed to tell anybody. Tiny bit of chipotle paste. All you need to know is chipotle paste, lime, salt, and pepper. But I'm not telling you the rest. Oh, like to hear a nice sear. I started grilling about five years ago. My mom taught me how to grill, and every year for Christmas, I go out and grill a whole hog for my family. Perfect avocado. And they go in my guacamole. I have a lot of fun at the grill because I'm full of energy. You might see me singing in the kitchen. I sing in the choir and I praise dance at my church. I'm really graceful when I dance, but in the kitchen, I'm not graceful at all. Because graceful, I think of like this or like that. But in the kitchen, I'm just like, like all over the place. Oh. I'm in love with these. My man, Big John, he's from Texas. You can't like him more because he's from your home state. No, I don't like him more, but from Texas and we give you a, a nacho challenge, this is right up his alley. For sure. Two cloves of garlic. In good barbecue, the meat should be the star of the place. 
making my marinade for my skirt steak. I already have my peppers over there in the blender. The flavor of this marinade is kind of a spicy fajita, but not real spicy. My favorite part of grilling is getting to season the meat and putting it on. And I like to get that going, and that's really where the flavors start from. For this challenge, I'm making classic skirt steak nachos with bell peppers and onion. Onion. My signature flavor is Texas-style barbecue. In Texas, we talk kind of slow, and we like a lot of things simple, but everything's bigger, bolder, and better in Texas. I've been grilling for about eight years now. My brisket was one of the biggest accomplishments for me in barbecuing because it had a really nice size smoke ring on it. I mean, come on. That's amazing. I love to play baseball, and me and my dad are always outdoors. We're riding four-wheelers. I like grilling because I always loved being outdoors, so grilling really just hit home for me. Skirt steak is a really tender meat, especially if it's cooked right and seasoned right. So I am putting my steak on the grill right away, just so I make sure it has the perfect cook. So three of these kids are using steak. That's a really smart choice, especially a skirt steak or a flank steak. Uh -huh. It's going to cook up real fast on the grill. Oh, my gosh, that's perfect. Oh, Letha has pineapple. I think Letha is going to give us like a little Cali steak kind of a vibe. You want flavor? I got flavor, believe me. I'm all about fresh California ingredients. I like spicy and colorful, and that's exactly what my nachos are. So I decided to make nachos with a grilled skirt steak with my homemade barbecue sauce, and my three grilled toppings will be the pineapple, the jalapeno, and the tomatoes. I love the fact that she's using those those fresh veggies, though, the she's pineapple. Grilling them. Yeah. I started barbecuing when I was seven years old. My dad taught me everything he knows. The first thing I remember grilling with my dad is ribs, and we made our own barbecue sauce. My dad's the grill master in my family, but. He doesn't want to hear this, but my skills are just as good as his. I'm feeling kind of nervous and excited at the same time. Just got to focus on what I'm doing and go for the goal. I'm very competitive in everything I do, even when it comes to school. I'm a straight-A student, and grades are really important to me so I can get into a good high school and college and get a scholarship. Mr. Barbecue. Why don't you show everybody what you got in the back of your head? This, uh, yeah. My man Big O came in here with barbecue in the back of his head. I think I might just grow my hair back so I can get that cut in the back of my head. Uh -huh. All right. Cool. All right, Mr. Barbecue. I'm really creative when it comes to growing. I'm sort of like the genius in barbecue. Today I'm making a chorizo nachos with a pineapple salsa. I got my chorizo going, and I'm getting started on my salsa. My three elements that I'm grilling is my peppers, my pineapple, and some corn to top it off. My style of barbecue is all about vibrant and fresh. I grew up in L.A., but barbecue's in my blood. I started barbecuing around four or five. In my family, we barbecued every day. When I grow up, I either want to be a rapper or a chef. Well, I'm the Ellis Griller in the game. Compared to me, all these other kids are tame, because I get the skills to pay the bills. Now I'm working on my avocado cream. There's avocado, sour cream, tomato, onion, and some lemon juice with salt and pepper. I'm hoping the avocado cream will bring some creaminess, of course, to the dish, and it has good texture, and it complements the dish very well. Perfect. All right, now I need some sour cream. I'm making my avocado cream sauce, and the first thing I'm gonna do is put sour cream in the blender, and then I'm gonna add some avocado. I'm gonna let this blend for a few seconds, not very long. We got 15 minutes left, guys. I'm trying to get my avocado blended, but not too runny. I mess up so bad. I completely just messed this up. I put my sour cream in first and then added my avocado. Oh my God. I'm freaking out. Both didn't blend at the exact same time. I don't think I have enough time to redo this and I have to have this on the top. Uh, I 
completely just messed this up. My avocado cream sauce didn't turn out right, so I'm gonna have to redo this. I put my sour cream in first and then added my avocado, which really made it way too runny. Nobody really likes anything too runny, so you're always gonna add the sour cream in after you blend the other stuff for a little while. It looks good. All right, kiddos, we have a very special guest in the house today. This young lady is a lover of everything Texas, so much so that she moved all the way from Australia to Austin, Texas. Welcome, Jess Prowse. Howdy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Jess Prowse is known as the hardcore carnivore, so I really need to up my A game. All right, so the theme is Tex-Mex today, and so they're supposed to give us the most amazing Tex-Mex nacho dish. Mm-hmm. Right, and they have to have grilled protein, three grilled toppings, special rub or barbecue sauce, and cheese. We have to have cheese on nachos. Exactly. You have to have, you have to. What makes for good nachos is cheese. I'm using tortilla cheese and some sharp cheddar. To get these things with some cheese on Cotija is a Mexican white cheese. It does not melt, but what you're looking for is to get it a bit crumbly. Tyra, do you have the cilantro? Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure I have plenty of cheese because you don't want to leave any chips empty, so you want to cover it up with cheese. My plan is to put it in the grill to melt. It's going to take a while, but I have to get this cheese melted. Ten minutes! Ten minutes until we get those tasty Tex-Mex nachos. Well, I'm using the wrong tool. Come on, Tyra. Okay, I'm grilling. I talk to myself while I'm grilling. Just melt. All you need to do is melt. Just need you to melt. That's all I need you to do. Well, I actually talk to the food because I want it to cook fast. Perfect, perfect cheese sauce. The winning part of these nachos is going to be my cheese sauce. Just a little cayenne pepper. I love cheese so much. This cheese sauce is going to have a kick in the back of your throat. It's not going to make you call your mama, but it is going to be spicy. It's creamy. It's delicious. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. I have my steak on the grill. Now I need to start on my cheese sauce so it has plenty of time to cook. I'm making a queso to go on top of my nacho. My queso is with diced tomatoes and green chili and block cheese. Make sure that's mixed up. The key to a good cheese sauce is to not let it get really hard. You gotta keep stirring so it'll stay nice and smooth. I'm gonna leave that on low heat for a little while. And now I'm gonna check my skirt steak and it looks just about ready. You gotta let that meat rest for about five minutes or so before you even cut it open. So I set it off to the side and let it rest. Big John? How are you doing? Oh man, I already can tell. I like the cheese that you're using over here. I'm doing a queso. I just basically gotta let it melt uh -huh. and do its own thing. Big John said he gotta let it melt, just do its thing. <laughs> My steak has been resting, so I'd have to start chopping it up. It's perfect for a full bite of nacho. I'm using refried beans. It's really like the glue for all the toppings. But I'm looking at my dish and I see it needs some color. What about pomegranate? Pomegranate is so perfect. It's fresh, it's bright, and there's no way that the other competitors are thinking about using pomegranate. The judges are really gonna like that. Funky fresh. We got eight minutes left, my little barbecue chefs. I pull off a piece of my chorizo to see if it's cooked perfectly, and it is. Yes! Okay, so you're in this competition, Jeff. Okay. What nachos are you making? I think I'm always going to have steak on my nacho. Are you going to throw that steak on the barbie? I'm going to chuck that steak on the barbie. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's actually about the balance. So I want a little spicy, maybe some jalapenos or something on there. I'm interested to see what these guys have come up with. Maybe something different to what I expect that is better. Two minutes! Woo! 
waiting for the last second to pull these nachos off so they can get a really good char. I'm really happy. It's looking good. I'm just worried that the steak might be a little rare, but taste-wise, it's delicious. I'm scraping this pot to make sure I get every little drop of cheese I can get left. Oh, ho, we got 30 seconds left. I want to make sure every chip is covered. Here we go, 10, <gasps> 9, Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up! And hands up! nachos i feel like the judges are gonna love it the only thing i'm worried about is how the flavors are gonna bind together lita hello now this looks like a platter mm -hmm. why don't you tell us what you made i have grilled skirt steak nachos on top i have pineapple tomato and jalapeno and my homemade avocado cream i am messing everything up what? <laughs> nachos are meant to get messy. That's, this is how you do it. I agree. <clears throat> I love that you use the shredded cheese, then you place the nacho platter back inside of the grill because it's really just an oven. But I really like the flavors that you use. The pineapple is very al pastor, which usually with pork, but I think it works great with the beef, too. You nailed the cook on your steak. Thank you. That avocado cream is my favorite part. It's such a delicate little surprise and such a nice way to incorporate avocados without giving me guacamole. But I will say this. One of my rules when it comes to nachos is leave no chip behind. And see this little poor guy here? He's missing the party. So just think about inviting everybody to the party. Okay, thank you. Oliver. What did you make for us? Chorizo nachos with pomegranate and real corn, peppers, and pineapple salsa. I see cilantro. I see free fried beans, cotija. I love these nachos. Mm -hmm. You stepped outside of the box. Pomegranate. pomegranate. Never seen it on nachos. No, me neither. Mm -hmm. And I think it works with it. This is a funky plate of nachos, and it takes a funky little kid like you. Because, I mean, you got barbecue in the back of your head. It don't get no cooler than that, right? Uh -huh. Using the chorizo was a really smart move. It's used so much in Mexican cookery. The beans, you could have thinned them out a little bit with some water so that they wouldn't have gotten quite so dry. Because when you put them back in the oven, they are going to dry out. OK. Good job, sir. I'm a bit nervous, but I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling safe right now. I think they love my outside of the box approach. Well, hello there. Hello. So what did you do for us? I made chipotle flake steak nachos with a chipotle cheese sauce and guacamole. I grilled my avocados, tomatoes, and my jalapeno. Woo! It's got some cake. You brought the spice. And I like it. Thank you. I think it brings more dimension to it. It's exactly what nacho should be. You created a really daring cheese sauce. And it's so daring because it is so hot. I don't think it's too hot at all. Because you use a pepper jack, when you put it in your mouth, it is smooth. I love this guacamole. And all of your elements are grilled inside of that. Mm -hmm. I think that was very smart. My favorite part on this dish is that rub that you used. Very flavorful. But I will say this, your steak has ended up being quite rare. And I think if you can take it a medium next time, you're going to end up making more people happy. You can see it. It needed two, three more minutes more on the grill. I'm really bummed that they said my steaks were undercooked. I hope that my flavors and my creativity saved me in this challenge. Big John from Texas, so you know all about nachos. Yes, sir. I made a nice skirt steak and my three grilled toppings. I took green bell pepper, red bell pepper, and onion, queso, pico de gallo, and an avocado cream sauce. This is 
classic as Tex-Mex as they come. Your steak is super tender. I think it tasted phenomenal. Thank you. Your cheese sauce, it's the quintessential queso. And that little bitty dollop of that avocado cream, you could have given me like a cup full of it because it's delicious. Thank you. This is a Texas bite of flavor. I don't know about the Texas size. I think I could have used more of your toppings. Your biggest flaw in here is your ratios are off. I'm a little bit ashamed that I don't have enough of everything because I'm from Texas and we do have a lot of everything on the plate. Sorry, Texas, but if I make it to the next round, I gotta make sure I have enough of everything and make Texas proud. Congratulations, everybody, on completing your first challenge. We asked you all to give us some Tex-Mex nachos, and we got some fantastic plates of food. Oliver, you gave us a fiesta in the cast iron skillet. But the beans were just a little bit dry. Jonathan, you had a great charred flavor on the fajita peppers, but we needed more toppings. Tyra, we loved your cheese sauce but that meat could have cooked longer. Letha, you had great flavors. Our biggest concern, though, is we needed more toppings. You did a fantastic job, but the person leaving us now is Tyra. I'm sad that I'm going home on the first challenge. Come here. You are a fantastic cook. A little bit more time on that grill and you would have you would have had it. I feel bad, but I undercooked that. Nobody else undercooked their steak. I really love this experience and I'm gonna keep grilling. Congratulations to the three kids still standing, but only one of you is gonna walk away with the title of Kids Barbecue Champion and that ten thousand dollars. All right, so it's time to spice up this fiesta celebration we got going on and take note of one of my favorite times of the week. I think it's everybody's favorite time of the week. Mm -hmm. I don't know what time you're talking about. Taco night! Oh, yeah. That is my favorite! Yes! I am so excited. My specialty is tacos. We're not talking about just one taco that's not gonna satisfy my texas size no appetite no way right we want you to give us two distinctly different tacos each taco must include a different type of grilled protein and at least one grilled topping and be served with a unique guacamole or salsa you have 60 minutes to create a barbecue taco platter your time Starts. You know, I was thinking about getting some tacos. Yeah, the thing. Yeah. Boom! Taco. Who likes a taco? I like a taco. Who's gonna eat two tacos? We are. We'll <laughs> eat some tacos. <laughs> I love mixing flavors. I'm really like a mad scientist. I'm using ponzu and a bit of goji jung. My first taco is a skirt steak taco with pineapple Asian pear salsa and layered tortillas. And for my second taco, a halibut taco with Asian guacamole. I love doing Texas barbecue with Asian. Most people don't really think that those blend together, but I think it's going to be delicious. Ponzu is sort of um, sort of a lighter soy sauce. Asian flavors are really the best. It's sweet, spicy. Gojujang, it's a basically a Korean spicy chili sauce. Being from L.A., I grew up with so many different cuisines. A lot of kids usually just order from, like, the kids' menu, like, chicken fingers or whatever. Like, are you kidding me? Order from the adult menu, please. I'm going to put these bad boys on the grill. Oliver already has his meat on the grill. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. I think time management is going to be very important in this challenge because we're talking about things that cook very fast and you have to assemble at the very last minute. 
Making a fish taco is really risky because fish, it can fall apart, it can also overcook really fast. No risk, no reward. Steak is done. I think the judges expect me to be creative here, and that's one thing I can do. Oliver. Yes. I see some skirt steak that has beautiful, uh... Sear. I feel like we need to switch roles. Yeah. yeah. That's perfect. Nice grill marks on that. And then you have some fish going on. What is that? Halibut. I'm going to put it on. Whoa, 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 whoa. I already oiled the grill. You did? Yeah. So it's not going to stick? No. All right. I feel like you're a boss. You don't even need me, huh? No. Nah. You don't need me? Uh, no. That's right. Get out of there, Eddie. Shoo, shoo. These have to be $10,000 tacos. So I'm pulling in all my special ingredients to make this taco the bomb. Hello, sir. Oh, Letha. I see some limes. I see some mango going on. I hope that she's going to stay with her fresh flavors, but really try to drive home on yeah. some of those bold elements. When I think of street tacos, I think of chicken and steak tacos. So I decide to make a chicken taco with the grilled mango salsa. Chicken breasts do not have a ton of flavor, so I'm going to marinate it before putting it on the grill. My strategy is to work faster to get, on, uh, get it on time. I want to let it marinate for a long time so the flavors can get all into the meat. But I don't have time to let it marinate for long. I'm going to make sure my flavors are all there and that it seasoned well. For my other taco, I decided to make grilled flank steak taco with spicy salsa, black beans, and grilled corn. I'm going to do steak again because it cooks quickly and I have a really good dry rub recipe. Got some cayenne pepper, seasoned salt, coriander, a little bit of cumin. This is a dry rub I make all the time. It's smoky, earthy, and spicy, and I know it's good. I make sure my grill is really hot because the dry rub is actually going to form a crust on the outside of the steak. There's $10,000 on the line. I want to walk away a winner. So I need to make sure my meat is cooked perfectly and seasoned, seasoned, seasoned. I'm doing tacos. That's my favorite Tex-Mex food because anything can go in tacos. Today I'm going to be making shrimp cotija tacos and ribeye tacos. I'm going to go with some classic Tex-Mex tacos as I am from Texas. I'm seasoning with salt and pepper right now. I'm really trying to keep things simple with my flavors. I choose some steak because it's going to bring out the Texas and the Mexican flavors in it. I like the fact that John has given us a ribeye. You really don't have to do too much to it because it has so much flavor inside of it, and you know. Oh, it's the king of the cut. The first time I had a shrimp taco in Mexico, I looked at the waiter and said, what kind of cheese is this? And he's like, cotija. It looked kind of iffy, but it looked good. So I tried it, and it was very delicious. I'm going to take some chili powder. This is my shrimp marinade. So now I'm going to do my own twist on it. My cumin. Where is my cumin at? Shrimp is a very universal seafood. Depending on what you season them with, I'm marinating my shrimp. It's going to have that nice spice to it. And then I'm going to put these on skewers, and then I'm going to put them on the grill. How do you feel about cheese and shrimp? As long as it's not melty, but the crumble on top, I think it'd work. Okay. Yeah. Three minutes, everybody. So we're seeing steak and, and that shouldn't surprise any of us because we saw a lot of steak in the last round mm -hmm. i am looking for a little bit more creativity though i'm working on my salsa for my white steak tacos my mom taught me how to make a salsa that's been in my family for four years it's fresh and it's colorful spicy salsa always goes good with steak hopefully the judges don't mind a little heat because it's going to be spicy Medic. Oh, you all right, sweetie? Got jalapeno in my eye. Flew up in there. Oh, no. I got jalapeno juice in my eye. She's going to rinse it just for you real quick. I feel like my eye is on fire. Which one is it? I do not have any more time to spare. This is not good. Impress every party guest with grilled jalapeno poppers. Slice the jalapenos and remove all the seeds and veins. 
Press string cheese into the peppers. Add some chorizo. And wrap in bacon. Grill until bacon is brown and slightly crispy. Medic. Oh, you all right, sweetie? I just got a little bit of jalapeno on my eye. I was cutting up my jalapeno, and then suddenly juice squirts up into my eye. Oh, oh, oh. I'm trying to get through it, but... It's burning really bad. Luckily, the medic is giving me some eye drops so I can continue. Next time I cut a jalapeno, I'm gonna have to wear goggles. I'm feeling good about my steak. So now I need to start working on my Asian pear and pineapple salsa. I'm gonna put this on top of my double-decker steak taco. So an Asian pear is sort of a mix of an apple and a pear. It's sweet, also a bit like crunchy. So good, I love them. I have my Asian pears grilling. I'm gonna take them off because I diced them really small. So they're gonna cook really fast. Pineapple is a lot of sugar. So I know the smoky flavor is really gonna come out. My steak's a little spicy. My sauce is a bit sweet and tart. It's like a match made in heaven. The next thing I'm working on is my Asian guacamole that's going to go on top of my halibut taco. I'm doing a non-traditional guacamole because I want all my Asian flavors to really stand out. Lime juice, ponzu, ginger. I'm just going to add fresh, good fat on top of my halibut tacos. I'm feeling pretty good. I put my steak on the grill. I have my shrimp marinade because the flavors are really going to have time to soak into those shrimp. I'm getting my toppings ready because those are going to take long to do. It's a lot to do in this round because we have two different tacos and there wasn't enough toppings on my nachos, so I have to have everything perfect with my toppings. For my shrimp taco, I'm going to be making a slaw for it. My shrimp already got a little bit of spice, but I figured that is gonna kind of cool it down a little bit. And then the acidity is also gonna balance everything out with the heat. And then I'm gonna take some of this. I'm gonna stick this in here and let it sit right there. We'll leave the rest of that for the top of the taco. For my robot taco, I'm gonna get started on my grilled topping. Bell peppers. I did my bell peppers last challenge as well, and they taste really good. Kind of like a fajita, so I'm sticking them on my tacos. My spicy salsa for my steak taco is finished. Now I need to make my salsa for my chicken tacos. Mango complements chicken very well, and it's a Tex-Mex flavor. My mango salsa is perfect for my chicken taco because it has some sweetness. I want my mango to char up so I can have some nice smoky flavor in my salsa. I'm all about fresh fruits and vegetables. I'm the freshest. Ooh, is that cucumber? Ooh, hello. I think it'll be a really nice fresh element. Yeah, absolutely. My salsa is gonna be as cool as a cucumber. You need to watch the fish like a hawk. I don't want it to get dry, so I'm flipping it over. It looks beautiful. Hi. Hi, Oliver. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Now, are you happy with how your fish looks here? Yes. I put a little bit of olive oil on it to give it a little bit more juiciness. But yeah. Yeah. Are you worried that the fish is maybe going to get a little bit cold just out there? I just warm it up so it stays a bit warm. Without overcooking it? Yes. I'm going to put my halibut on the grill constantly so it can stay hot. Okay. We'll just keep an eye on that. I'm here to prove that I'm the best barbecuer here and possibly the United States. I hope John's going to bring us some creativity. Here's what I've noticed. In the first round, he basically gave us your quintessential queso nachos. And in this round, he's given us a shrimp taco and he's given us a steak taco. It may be really, really good, but not necessarily out of the box. 
right, Shrimp's going on. I want to win probably more than anybody out here, right? Because I'm from a small town in Texas, and nobody would ever think I'd be picked for something like this. And then I might win it. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, I really want to make Texas proud. Hello, Jonathan. Hi, Mr. Maris. Okay, so I see that you've got a lot of really good things going on here. Talk to me about the toppings. Are you doing coleslaw on the ribeye? On the shrimp. Coleslaw on the shrimp. And then I'm doing bell peppers on the ribeye. Rib okay. The main one that I'm concerned about for you is your ribeye. Because you're giving me steak again with peppers again. Just like you did in the last challenge, okay? And so I'm still yes, seeing you play it pretty safe right now. What could you add to it to bring a new flavor? Something that's going to say, this is my twist on it. Damaris is right. If I don't step it up and get more creative, I won't win this competition. Think about giving me something unexpected. I'm thinking, what can I add to these tacos? It's all running through my mind. You have about 11 minutes left. I'm feeling very overwhelmed right now. I don't know if I'm going to be able to think outside the box and get everything done in time. Damaris said, you're way too in your comfort zone. You need to do something outside the box. You have about 11 minutes left. I am kind of flustered about it, but she is right. I'm really going to have to step it up right now. There's fruit. I'm immediately thinking pears. It's a nice, juicy fruit. I'm going to dice it and put those on my shrimp taco. Jonathan has definitely taken your advice because he's run back for some pears. Yay! I chose a pear because it's a sweet fruit. And it's really going to balance out that heat with the shrimp. i got to be more creative, especially with Oliver over there. And Lita's really worrying me, too, because she knows her Tex-Mex flavors as well. My steak looks good, and it smells good. For this challenge, I'm making a grilled flank steak taco and a grilled chicken taco. My chicken's done, and it has some beautiful grill marks. I just hope it has a ton of flavor still. I'm using two different types of tortillas for my tacos. Corn tortilla goes good with steak and flour for the chicken. I'm putting oil on my tortillas. It's not all about flavor, it's also about texture. So by grilling my tortillas, I know it's going to have a nice crunch to it. It's a tip from my dad. This is one of my secret weapons. I have to make sure not to put them on direct heat so they don't get really burned. I'm feeling nervous and excited. I think I'm going to get all of it on, on time. Time is running down, and I have to start playing. Five minutes. I'm going to work on my tortillas for my steak. I'm making a double-decker taco. I'm going to put them on the grill on top just to get them a little toasty. I'm using refried beans because I want to layer my tortillas. In the first challenge, Demara said that my beans were a bit dry, so I'm adding water to thin them out a bit. I'm feeling pumped that I'm going to have a great dish. I'm hoping my halibut isn't overcooked. I know these Asian tacos are going to blow the judges away because i got to trick up my sleeve. And it's a blowtorch. Here goes Oliver. He has a torch now. Oh, dang. We have a extinguishers around, right? <laughs> so, torching my cheese, it really brings a nice element of smoky flavor. And let's be real, I don't think anybody else is going to blowtorch their cheese. We got one minute left. I need to see some delicious tacos starting to get assembled on those tables over there. It's looking really good. There's all these last minute touches. Yeah. It's just a race to the finish. 10, 9, 8, 7, Seven 6, six five, 4, 3, 2, I barely finished. 
I look down at my dish and I'm feeling pretty good. The textures of my tortillas, I think I nailed it. I'm really worried about my dish because I changed my original plan. And so when I added those pears, I was taking a big jump. I hope it's going to turn out good. Hello there. Hi. Howdy. So, Mr. Oliver, your task was to create two different tacos with two proteins and create a salsa. What did you make for us? Today, judges, I made a grilled skirt steak taco with a Asian pear, grilled pineapple salsa. And then for the second taco, I made you a halibut taco with Asian guacamole. So first things first, is this a double-decker taco right here that I got? Yes, I layered it. <laughs> Oliver, you're an innovator. Mm hmm I like to push the envelope. You don't even see the box anymore. You step so far out of it. You hit it right on the head. Seriously, you torching that bottom part? Genius. The steak is tender. It's seasoned well. Delicious. The only thing that I didn't love about your steak taco is, I think for me, there's just a little bit too much fruit. One element of sweet would have tied in nicely. So go over to your fish taco. I can taste the ponzu. I can taste the citrus. I can taste each and every element. The flavor inside of your fish taco is phenomenal. But your fish is a little bit over. Say what? Overcooked fish, no way. I'm so disappointed. The very smart part about the fish taco is that you paired it with a fat. And that guacamole with the Asian flavors is something I've never had before and is absolutely something I'll make. You got some, you got a lot of stuff going on in your head. Yeah. You got like two little mice churning away <laughs> in your skull, and I love it. I'm feeling good. I had really bold flavors, and I think I should win. I can almost taste that $10,000. Uh, how you doing, sweetie? Good. So today I have a flank steak taco with spicy salsa, black beans, and grilled corn. For my other taco, a chicken taco with the grilled mango salsa. You are the tortilla whisperer. <laughs> the puffy, the crunchy, it's still pliable on both the flour and the corn knocked it out of the park. Thank you. I love that you stuck to your guns and gave us vibrant, fresh flavors. I think that you were very successful with that mango salsa. It is sweet. It is balanced. There is the heat from the jalapeno. When I saw you cutting the cucumber, I'm like, Oh, that's going to be good. Because it's little bursts of freshness. That being said, I think you needed to marinate the meat longer. Your chicken is very under seasoned. Dang it! Your chicken is very, very under seasoned. I actually would have loved to see you taking that rub you put on that steak. I would have loved to see you put it on that chicken. Your steak tacos remind me of like street tacos. Yes. You can see you've created a crust on the outside of that steak. That was exactly what I was going to say. You seasoned the heck out of that yep. steak. You know that you're going to need to brush your teeth afterwards, and it's <laughs> fantastic. You know, like that's what you want. You want to be like, oh, sorry guys, I ate a taco. <laughs> My bad. Right? It's so good. I'm also getting this really refreshing salsa. It is balanced. There is the heat from the jalapeno. But all in all, you should be really proud. Thank you. I'm feeling really confident. Right now, I'm most worried about my chicken taco, but hopefully my steak taco makes up for it. Big John. Hello there, sir. Hi. So tell us what you created. I created today a ribeye taco with fajita, onions, and peppers, and a shrimp tortilla taco with pears. Oh, it's delicious. Mm. Yeah, these flavors. Wow. I got to be honest with you, because you seem like you're the type of man that want me to shoot it to you straight. Yes, sir. These shrimp tacos are seriously the bomb. I love 
of the spiciness of the shrimp. They're cooked perfectly, which is not easy to do. Your sauce cooled it down a little bit. And then I get this beautiful, bright, crisp, sweet pear, and it works. And it's such a surprise. I love that you could think on your feet and adapt and bring something extra creative to your tacos. Very nicely done. Thank you. Your steak is cooked perfectly. You can see here it's, it's nice and medium, nice and peak on the inside. You took the best cut of steak and you're like, I know this steak is good. And you kept it simple. That being said, the beef taco still feels a little bit safe to me. It seems like it wore jeans to the tuxedo party next to the shrimp one. That was nice. What? That was nice. It does, right? But all in all, I think you did Texas extremely proud. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's low star pride right there. That was a really good round. So how do you think you did? I think I really executed the dish well. Let's start off with my man, Big John. After tasting all of the tacos, I still think about his shrimp taco. That was the best taco I had today. But now the problem is that we've had a better steak taco. I think Letha for sure had the best steak taco. Yeah. Yep. Her second taco, though, was maybe one of the worst tacos. The concept of it was good. I mean, we're talking fresh flavors. And the puffy tortilla, which we're so excited about. Too. Absolutely. If we're choosing on creativity, I think Oliver wins. He took this challenge and ran with it. But the halibut was overdone. It's such a tough decision. It's so tough. Congratulations on making it through a very difficult round. This was probably the hardest competition we've had so far. You should all be so proud of yourselves. Unfortunately, only one person can be crowned this week's Kids Barbecue Champion and take home $10,000. The winner of today's competition is Jonathan. I just won $10,000. Good job, brother. And I'm the kids' barbecue champion. I don't think it's completely hit me yet. I'm super happy right now. I'm the small town.